For this PowerPoint, I'm going to continue our discussion of the neurobiology of aggression and bring in the endocrine system or hormones as well, particularly sex hormones. So I would like you to be able to describe different kinds of aggression, which, you know, we've already sort of gone over uh, a little bit. Well, really, that was more violence uh, and how uh, sex hormones might contribute. I would like you to describe the effects of overectomy and castration on uh, uh, aggression, describe the effects of neurochemicals covered in class on aggression, and to be able to compare and contrast chimps and bonobo aggression and how this relates to behavioral and uh, social structure, at least in a correlated, uh, correlational manner. Aggression has different meanings. The primary focus here is physical aggression and violence between individuals, uh, exclusive of predation. In particular, I am going to talk today a little bit about intermale aggression or aggression between males of the same species, which uh, you know is of course uh, you know a well-documented phenomenon even in human populations, and is one that I you know admittedly have struggled with a little bit at times myself, and uh, you know as we are evolving socially. I find it, uh, you know, frustrating, even my own behavior at times, uh, you know, where I, you know, have some sort of, uh, you know, aggressive drive or instinct. And, uh, you know, it's just not really fitting in, you know, modern society, whereas it would have been even, a, you know, a few decades ago. For example, I mean, like, who has watched the movie Hamilton now that it's out on Disney Plus, or maybe you've seen lucky enough to have seen the musical, uh, you know, and, you know, there it was very common, you know, uh, you know, almost encouraged for men to shoot guns at each other, even those vying to be president of the United States. Uh, you know, aggression has, you know, had a huge impact on society. And, uh, you know, I, I want to think about that, or I want you to think about that a little bit in terms of the evolution of society. And, uh, you know, it is, it is a problem, and I, I, there's not really a, a great answer to it. <laughs> I mean, like, it's somewhat evolutionarily ingrained, but it's not acceptable. I mean, like, that, you know, we can, males can aggress, uh, you know, especially in instances of domestic violence. Uh, you know, they're, they're big problems. But at the same time, I mean, aggression, uh, you know, war, uh, these sorts of things, there, there are reasons that, uh, you know, we wouldn't want to completely stamp it out either. Uh, well, arguably, I mean, that is an opinion, but, uh, you know, and maybe one that I might be in the minority on, even at a uh, liberal arts campus. But, you know, uh, it, it's been a long time since we've had a major... Uh, you know, international level, uh, you know, global war, like World War II, uh, you know, and uh, we, uh, aggression, uh, you know, th th there are uh, reasons that it was naturally selected for. Uh, you know, it led to society survival, uh, historically, for long periods of time. And maybe we're past that. Maybe technology is to the point that that sort of uh, biological genetic aggression that men have is no longer necessary. Although, do you really want to bet on that just yet? It hasn't been that long since the last world war. I don't know, something to think about. And then I also want you to think about it in the context of evolution and bonobos and chimpanzees, a very fascinating concept that we will get to at the end of this PowerPoint. So you can control many of these sort of learned and developmental like concepts in animal studies. So if you just look at uh, non-human primates and you study the effects of uh, removing the source of the sex hormones, and like in this case of a male, you remove the testes. In the, the case of the female, you would remove the ovaries. So that would be an overectomy. So in castration, where you're moving the testes and the male sex hormones, uh, you can see that that significantly decreases the uh, biting attacks or the attacks of one male on another. By contrast, uh, overectomy, 
or removing the uh, ovaries in females does not influence biting attacks at all. Of course, there is also arguably a floor effect here because the females don't exhibit many biting attacks in general. Interestingly, the female uh, monkeys, uh, you know, show very different levels of aggression. And, uh, you know, to say that this is nicer, I think, would be erroneous. Uh, you know, my, my wife has done work in uh, social housed monkeys where they, they put four males and four females together and they establish social dominance hierarchies. In males, this is very clear cut. There's one alpha male, always two intermediary males, and one subordinate male. That's how it works. I mean, it's just very clear cut sort of diamond social hierarchy. The uh, males, the alpha male, uh, you know, interestingly, I mean, according to her research, they, they're protected from addiction. You know, you give them access to cocaine, the subordinate goes to town. They take all sorts of cocaine. The alpha male, they'll experiment with the cocaine, but they, they, they don't really care, like go lose control if you will, and intermediaries are in between. Uh, you know, but how they aggress is also very different. Uh, you know, they, they do fight. I mean, the alpha male and, uh, will beat up the intermediaries and all of them will beat up the, the subordinate, but it stops there. You know, they, they get in the fight, they sort of lose, learn their position, the subordinate note learns to stay in the bottom corner of the pen or the cage, and that's that, done, settled. Females are a little different. You know, the, the aggression is a little different. It's not so much biting attacks. It's constant harassment, constant. Uh, and uh, the sort of the top three, uh, you know, shift around a little bit. There's not one clear alpha. Uh, they sort of switch positions a little bit and all of them rail on the subordinate. And they don't stop is the difference. Uh, you know, with the males, I mean, once that social hierarchy is sorted out, they sort of leave the, the, the subordinate down there to just sort of be down there at the bottom, uh, unless they want to be groomed or something like that. Now, the females, it's very different. It's constant harassment, and, uh, you know, they, they will fling feces all day long at the poor subordinate. Uh, and, you know, there, there is that sort of a revolving door of the alpha female. And uh, when this is in rhesus macaque monkeys, I should note. I mean, there are going to be differences that we're going to talk about uh, later between different non-human primates and how they aggress. But at least in rhesus macaques, that's the difference between what it looks like when the, in the female hierarchy versus the male social hierarchy and what the aggression actually looks like. So, you know, here the dependent measure was biting attacks. So they, they wouldn't show many biting attacks, but I mean, like whether or not this influences other uh, ways of aggression, uh, you know, is something that I think would remain somewhat of a more open-ended question. So going back to the males and biting attacks now, uh, one question that you might have is, well, you know, maybe just cutting off the testes of the male does all sorts of things, and, you know, they're, they're just down and depressed and not wanting to interact at all. What happens if you take a monkey that's been castrated and then give them testosterone? What happens? Well, you can see from the graph that that alone is sufficient to restore biting attacks in the male monkeys, suggesting that, you know, at least in non-human primates, there's a very clear uh, relationship between increases in testosterone and increased uh, aggression. So I've already mentioned this and give you some examples uh, with pharmacology lesions and stimulation of the dorsal raphae. Uh, but I wanted to, you know, again, go over the relationship between serotonin and aggression, which is a negative one. The most aggressive monkeys in a free-range colony have been shown to have the lowest levels of serotonin, whereas mice that lack serotonin receptors are hyper-aggressive. Again, suggesting that increasing serotonin might reduce uh, aggressive episodes. Other substances have been implicated in various forms of aggression uh, in both humans and animals. You know, we've already gone over a few uh, neurochemical correlates, but uh, uh, including GABA. So again, if you enhance GABA transmission, 
This uh, significantly reduces aggression, aggressive behavior in uh, non-human primates, rats, mice, and humans. Uh, in addition, a variety of peptide hormones, including vasopressin, oxytocin, and the endogenous, endogenous opioids have all been implicated in the control of aggression. So we all exist in hierarchies. Humans are very complicated because we have multiple social hierarchies. I mean, think about your own life. You know, there might be a different hierarchy, dynamic at home, at work, at your intramural sports, I mean, like whatever it might be. Um, you know, and it's also worth noting that there are uh, differences in male and female dominance hierarchies, like I already, you know, uh, described. Uh, and, but that description that I had provided was in rhesus macaques, a relatively, uh, you know, a, a, a somewhat lower level non-human primate, still much more related to humans than rats. Uh, but two of the most closely related uh, non-human primates to humans are the chimpanzee and the bonobo. Both share 99.9% .9 of their DNA with us, if that's important at all, I don't know. But uh, there's some very interesting differences here that I think uh, could possibly be related to changes in, or distinctions in, uh, you know, human evolution. Uh, you know, how much the bonobos or chimpanzees are related to humans is a subject of, you know, intense debate. And it, it, at some level, isn't a scientific question, it's more of a philosophical one, because how do you really test that? But uh, nevertheless, I find it incredibly fascinating to consider the differences between bonobos and chimpanzees and whether or not you see these sorts of uh, dynamics in human populations as well. So first I'm going to show you a couple clips here of what chimpanzees and bonobos look like. So this is a male chimpanzee. And here is an alpha bonobo. One difference in bonobos is that the alpha of the overall social group, including both males and females, again, with the rhesus macaque example I gave you before, they were separated into only males and only females. But in the male-female dynamic, the bonobo female is the alpha, whereas in chimpanzees, it is most certainly the alpha male. So this is what an alpha female bonobo looks like. This male bonobo chimpanzee may look like a dominant male, but he's really just a big mama's boy. That's because in bonobo society, the mamas hold lots of power. It's shared between males and females. This alpha female is one of the group's leaders. Don't believe it? Watch how she snaps the sapling then struts her stuff in a way that would make any dominant male chimpanzee proud. The message is clear. This babe is boss. These bossy adult females form strong bonds with their offspring, especially the males. All babies are intimately cared for through the first five years. But eventually, young female bonobos must leave the troop and find another troop to accept them. The sons stay behind, and the ones with the most powerful mothers become the most privileged males. Bonobo mothers almost never discipline their young, even when they steal food right out of mom's mouth. Yeah, by contrast, you know, an alpha chimpanzee would kill a uh, young whippersnapper trying to challenge him. In the summer of 2018, 86% of Oregon was in severe drought. It's a little. So here you can see an evolutionary clade of uh, you know different non-human primates. You know, rhesus macaques would be you know somewhere in the middle there, uh, trending toward earlier uh, evolutionarily developed. It's also worth noting that the, the last common ancestor between chimpanzees and bonobos and humans has never been uh, really identified. I think it's a, you know, a, a huge 
critique of evolutionary theory, uh, you know, but it, it's just reality. And I, I think it is important to recognize it. I mean, like we have not yet found that uh, missing link. But nevertheless, uh, you know, it's still a theory that I accept. And this is the, uh, the chimpanzees and bonobos would be closest to the uh, homo sapiens. Now, the chimpanzees and bonobos are uh, polar opposites. Though. I mean, they, they, they are uh, really incredibly different. And how that might relate to human evolution, your guess is as good as mine, but it's at the very least a fun sort of philosophical thought exploration to consider. So let's look a little bit more into the differences between the bonobos and the chimpanzees. So I had to move in my daughter's room here real quick for one slide. But uh, anyway, where this table, I think, nicely illustrates some of the differences between bonobos and chimpanzees. Bonobos are, have a more slender build, uh, whereas chimpanzees are more stocky, sort of like your football player. Uh, you know, the, uh, they also live in different places. Chimpanzees are sort of a little more widespread, which might have a little to do with war and the success of war. Uh, there are much more pronounced sexual dimorphism uh, in the chimpanzees, where male and females have very clear sex differences that are uh, incredibly noticeable. Bonobos, you don't see that. Uh, you know, they, they look very similar. Uh, you know, they act similarly have similar jobs, these sorts of things. Uh, social organization is very different. Uh, you know, the, the bonobos, the, it's the female bonds that are really sort of defining the, the troop or the, the social group. Whereas in males, it's the male, uh, you know, there's one dominant alpha male. And, you know, for the most part, it's either going to kill, kick or kick out any challenger that isn't, uh, you know, right under uh, him. Uh, vocalizations are also quite different. Uh, you know, uh, the bonobos are more, emit more high-pitched noises, whereas the chimpanzees uh, hoot, scream, and grunt more. They also are known to drum on hollow trees as a means of, uh, you know, communication. Uh, the dominance hierarchy is also very different, as I've already alluded to. Uh, females uh, form strong bonds and help form the social uh, hierarchy. Whereas in males, it's a, a very linear set of relationships amongst males, including, again, a very clear alpha male. Group hunting is something only observed in chimpanzees. It's never been observed in the wild in uh, females or at all. Uh, you know, territoriality is very different. Uh, you know, the chimpanzees go to war. I mean, they, they will destroy you. I mean, like aggressively uh, destroy you. Whereas the bonobos, you know, don't really do that. And they, uh, you know, they, they are much more willing to find ways of peace and harmony. Uh, interestingly, the chimpanzees are the only one of the two to be observed using tools. Uh, bonobos, not so much. And sexual behavior is also very different. Uh, you know, in chimpanzees, it's a, very much a dominant situation. The, you know, more dominant the male, the more sex they're going to have, the more partners they're going to have. In bonobos, it, you know, you see, you know, first of all, intrasex relations between female, female, and male, male not really common in chimpanzees. And you also see sex being used uh, for conflict resolution, uh, you know, a lot more than just dominance. Uh, so, you know, those are uh, some of the, the big differences there uh, uh, in between the bonobos and the chimpanzees. So some believe that humans evolved from early primates. Interestingly, there's also some Neanderthal DNA in there too. Uh, this is most prevalent if you're from the Basque region of Spain, sort of the area between the uh, modern France and Spain. Interestingly, this population of the Basque, uh, you know, you, you, they, uh, you know, look a little uh, distinct. There are some distinct features. The males tend to have very deep voices and they're, you know, a, li a little big. Uh, but, you know, uh, bonobo and chimpanzee DNA is really what I uh, want to emphasize right here. So, you know, in fact, we, we share about 99.9% .9 of our DNA with both species. 
So, you know, if there is some bonobo or chimpanzee DNA that was transferred to us, you know, how do you think that influenced our genes and our societal makeup? See, now they're, they're so different. And another question is whether you would rather be in a bonobo-led or a chimpanzee-led society. Having taught this uh, in person before, I can tell you that in, on a liberal arts campus, uh, the, the vote tends to be overwhelmingly bonobo. So I'm just taking the playing devil's advocate here and going to put forth a chimpanzee society argument here. And, uh, you know, there, there are a couple of things that come to mind. Uh, one is that the tool, uh, the tool use, I think that's a striking difference between the two. Uh, you know, it's possible that the ferocious competition, like you might see also in a capitalistic society, uh, drives evolution forward, drives uh, the development of new tools, drives us to the moon, these sorts of things, creates new medicines, leads to you know, sharp improvements that, uh, you know, might not be there, uh, you know, in the more uh, bonobo society, at least, you know, that is true based on observations in the wild with them using tools. You know, the drumming uh, is also a distinction. You know, maybe it, it drove forth alternative ways of communication, musicality, even the development of uh, new music. I don't know. Uh, and then uh, one other that I, I think might be important, uh, you know, is the, the group hunting, you know, banding together to, uh, you know, sort of, make sure that there's a, enough meat and, uh, you know, for everybody to be, uh, at least those that are on the alpha male side, at least, to be fat and happy. And finally, war. I mean, so, I mean, if the bonobos and chimpanzees went to war, well, they wouldn't. <laughs> I mean, the chimpanzees would just destroy them, uh, you know, and if there's no way that the two are going to intermingle, the bonobos are probably going to get out of there. So, you know, I mean, like, if, uh, you were all worried about fortifying borders of your society. Uh, you know, the, the chimpanzee-based society might be more effective at doing that. That being said, would it be more pleasant to be in sort of the hippy-dippy bonobo society? Most definitely. I mean, like, it sounds much more pleasant. Uh, you know, long-term survival, evolution, glory, these sorts of things might be more pronounced than the other. And in the long run, what would you pick for your kids?